What's going on, everybody? I received a free light from Unit Farm. They asked me to do an unboxing video, to which I replied, mm, unboxing videos suck. And they do, most unboxing videos suck. So we're just gonna magically unbox this, and in the second, it's gonna be hanging up over there. Ready? Okay, I lied. I took it out of the box, and I thought, this is pretty cool, I wanna show you this. See how thin that is? It's like a single sheet of aluminum with the LEDs surface mounted to the, the board and then the board mounted to the piece of aluminum. It is a tiny light though, tiny light. This is the UF-1000. They have a 2000, which I think would probably, I would probably prefer, or maybe even the 3000, but uh, I suspect they'll all perform equally. They're just different sizes. So now I'll hang it up. All right. Now, in order to make this a little bit more interesting than just a simple unboxing video, we're going to go through the points of information in a quiz-like format. But before we get to that, the specs. It's a very small device. It's like this big, as you saw. It's like 10 inches by 9 inches, designed for a 2 foot by 2 foot growth space, which is not very big. All right, question number one of the quiz. According to YouTube guidelines, terms, and conditions, all YouTubers must A, wear a black t-shirt, 2, start each video with what's up guys or a lot of people have been asking or d home alone is the best christmas movie ever answered below okay that's not a real question here's the real question number one any led grill light that you buy will come with what is called a ppfd map the question is what does ppfd stand for that's right photosynthetic photon flux density Photosynthetic photon flux density is just a big fancy way of saying how many photons of light are passing through a given area in a given amount of time, measured in micromoles per meter squared per second. Okay, this one has a PPFD map that looks like this, and I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Um, you can see it's brightest in the center, it drops off toward the edges. So you might ask yourself, is that good or not? Is that good enough to grow lettuce or tomatoes or peppers or whatever? Like most people, I think, look at this kind of thing and they're like, that looks like that looks bright i think it's bright will it grow my whatever and i've been searching for a definitive answer to this for a long time i finally found one that i think is pretty good i'll link it in the description below but it says for vegetative growth you need about 10 moles per meter squared per day now the light measured in micromoles you need to do a little bit of math multiply that out based on like what i think is a rough average of this thing and i come up with 14 hours a day for this light on to produce 10 moles per meter squared to grow lettuce, which is in line with what the recommendations are on their website. Question number three, what will shorten the lifespan of an LED faster than almost anything else? The answer to that is heat. Heat will shorten the lifespan of an LED almost more than anything else. If you drive an LED too hard, you put too much power through it, it heats up and it shortens the lifespan. If you don't have adequate heat dispersal, it shortens the lifespan. It'll burn it out faster. This light alleges 100,000 hours of use. 100,000 hours is like 19 years or 14 hours a day, which is a long time and really unprovable. So I don't know if I believe that it can get 100,000 hours. Let's take the temperature of this thing. 109 degrees on the top, 117 on the bottom. That's not too bad. That's not as hot as my Mars Hydro light got. That thing got like 120, 130 degrees. It was a hot light. So in conclusion, who is this light for? This light, I think, is for, I actually don't know. It's a very small light. I have here four tomato plants. That's about what I think I can grow into this. So I will use this light to grow those little seedlings, and then I will transplant those seedlings into my garden in a few weeks. In case you're wondering what I'm growing, I'm growing glacier tomatoes and silets or sealets. I don't know what, how to say that. Both of these are cooler season tomatoes. They're supposed to produce earlier. I live in zone six. So zone six, my last frost was like March, or sorry, May 15th. I'm going to try something this year. I'm going to try putting these in a little greenhouse outside about a month before my last frost. So they'll survive because they won't get frosted. And they're supposed to be able to produce earlier. So I want tomatoes by like June is my goal. My record, I think, is the 1st or 2nd of July. I've never had anything before that. Let's see if these can do the trick. And, and they don't get very tall. They're supposed to get two or three feet tall. So I'm going to put that same cover back on in the fall and see if I can get tomatoes longer into the season. Because a fresh tomato, man, there ain't nothing better than a fresh tomato. One last thing, a comment contest this week. Do you know what this is? I grew this in my garden last year. I've let it dry and I need to peel it. If you know what this is, leave it in the comments below. Those are the seeds you hear rattling about. 
So that is all for this video. I will be giving this light away in a future video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. I forgot to answer the YouTube question, the YouTube guidelines question. You don't have to wear a black t-shirt. You don't. I found that out and I put it on a dark gray t-shirt instead and a dark gray pullover. Uh, but you don't have to wear black. You do have to start videos with what's up guys or a lot of people have been asking. That is a pretty hard and fast requirement. So, yeah.